suspend aldehyde, which is a principal component of almonds, and hydrogen cyanide, which is its true defense mechanism. And some people have to worry about the types of foods they eat because there are large amounts of cyanohydrin stored in lots of different types of uh, mostly fruits, pitted fruits like apricots, uh, other sorts of cherries, and those sorts of things. They usually are stored within the pits, and not too much is actually in the flesh. But some have tremendous amounts of these cyanohydrin stored within the flesh, and if they're not prepared properly, you get reversibility, you get hydrogen cyanide, and most likely it can be death if you eat a large amount. Normally, a little poop from the HCF to get from the isn't going to kill you, but it can be more off predators that are after that. So I found this, and I just thought that was a studio fun. <laughs> Let's find stewies. 
And by the time we got to all of it, there's Stewie, there's Stewie, there's Stewie, there's, and they're seeing them very easily. So when you're given a molecule, you should be able to recognize when these sorts of things can occur. And we'll spend more time talking about that here in a second. But again, this is mostly just an aside, that when that hydrolysis takes place, water is splitting the two molecules. And you get the glucose, which gives the sweet flavors and the bulk can be used to create pies and cakes and all kinds of other things that are necessary for it to survive and have some enjoyment. But what is also produced is the cyanohydrate, the same exact cyanohydrate that the millipede produces. And so as a consequence of that, in the aqueous acidic environment, the reversibility kicks in for this, and hydrogen cyanide is actually produced from that combination. So if we have an aldehyde or cyanide, we combine them together to make the cyanohydrin, but because of the equilibrium, there's also the ability for it to come this way. And ACM gas. So as it kind of shock the ignorance. Or as it comes into contact with the iron in our blood, it pretty much irreversibly binds. There's ways to prevent cyanide poisoning. But a cyanide binds to iron better than oxygen can with polar charge and everything. And yeah, that's what leads to the cause of cyanide sickness and poisoning as a result. And that drives more of the cyanide group being generated. So it's all equilibrium. And in these next two toxins, where we deal with oxygen and nitrogen acting as nucleophiles, it's completely an equilibrium idea. You go one way or the other simply by reversing the conditions. In one direction, we remove water, and reverse, we add that. Double bonds, we add in water, we make alcohol, we take the water away, we go back to the double bond. It's no different. It's just a recognition of conditions. So the most important thing that I mentioned last time about the cyanide group is its ability to be a launching pad function group that provides so many different things. In one step, it must be, we will eventually see that the nitro group will be obviously converted into this group, the amine. In one step, as we will see in a moment, it can be converted into a carboxylic acid. It can be converted into an aldehyde. It has the ability to be converted into a ketone. All of those in one step. It's a very, very versatile group. In addition to not only being a carbon-carbon bond form, and in essence, you can selectivity react with epoxides, octavides, all that stuff. So if we had to take a stab at this moment, if the reagent does exist and we know what it is, what would we use to create this transformation of the nitrile group of the cyanohydrin to generate this overall mean picture as a consequence of the carbon and nitrogen adding not just two hydrogens but four hydrogens. Add two five bonds, now we have two new signals. So hydrogen platinum is what we would expect. But because hydrogen platinum is not particularly selective, there are a lot of other pi bonds that we know can go away. We know obviously there are some that don't. So we also have reagents that are specifically to polarize pi bonds like aldehydes and ketones, the carboxylic acid family, lithium hydride takes care of all of them, and we'll take care of this one too. Now, mechanistically, we won't look at this one for a little while, but I can imagine you can see what could occur. H minus is what lithium hydride is. Not just a little bit of H minus, it is a big, nasty H minus. And if you look at a nitrile group, C triple bond N, it's a stick, it's a magnet, it's totally polarized. All of the front ends be primarily moving towards nitrogen, hydride should go to the carbon, and it's taking over the same mechanism of what a carbonyl group basically is. We continue to do that until all the hydrons have been incorporated, and then always, because lithium hydride leads to the nasty condition, keep it away from the protons until the very end. And that's why the neutralization step is, comes after that, and always should. What about this one? So this is the bookend extremes that I mentioned last time, that the nitrile can go to the most basic function group in organic to the most acidic function group in organic, A plus B plus C. And so if you look at what we had, and not what we have, it's unusual. It's not, where the heck does the nitrogen go? So as a result of that, the nitrogen atom has been removed, and some new groups have arrived. That's an example of substitution. It all didn't happen in one step, so it can't be SN2. So it's an example of where we add water and then eventually eliminate that nitrogen in whatever 